Welcome to Pagan Crafting. I'm your host, Kara. Today, we're going to talk about paralyzed by perfection. What is killing your creativity? Today, I want to celebrate imperfection. But how does perfectionism affect creativity? Perfectionism can lead to some really negative thinking, like you're not good enough. You don't deserve this, or this isn't art, or I'm not an artist, or you're comparing yourself to another artist. This type of harsh talk, self-talk, is meant to keep you from taking chances, exploring, growing, and getting started on your next creative endeavor. So today we're going to celebrate imperfections. We're going to embrace the imperfections of your art and in your practice, recognizing that your uniqueness lies in the flaws and your quirks of your journey is a process of growth and discovery, not a quest for perfection. Remember that your goal is not to create a photographic likeness, but an emotional accuracy. That was said by Juliet Estetides. Today I thought we could have a craft, I'm going to paint, and a chat. I'd like to talk about what is perfectionism in art? How can we stop obsessing over art? How can we stop thinking that we're not good enough? Or when and where and how do we start? I'd like to go over some tips for dealing with perfectionism as an artist. I'm also going to give you some ideas, possibly some homework near the end of this video for tips to get out of that perfectionism feeling or that procrastination, my friend. Yes, that's basically what it is, is that when to start, how to start it, we're just going to get started. I'm going to show you some messy artist tips. Perfectionism as an artist can look like a creative block. It can be anxiety. It can be procrastination, avoidance, or never feeling satisfied with your work. It will slow things down to create a lot of anxiety along the way, but it doesn't have to be this way, my love. But here's something to remember. You can challenge yourself and achieve your artistic goals without the stress of perfectionism. Being a high achiever or being a perfectionism is not the same. Having a high IQ, being a perfectionism is not in relation. I've actually looked in and researched this and it doesn't, it shows up inconclusive. So perfectionism can come from all levels of ambition IQ and with perfectionism it's basically it's a fear about making a mistake or failing at your art this fear can lead to paralysis and procrastination if avoidance is one of your superpowers and I'm chilling out with myself right here because I stopped painting for a few years as a perfectionist mindset behind the reluctant to get started on your art, it took me a while to get started on my grimoire. I was overthinking it. Where should I start? How should I? I would just like, I just needed to pick my first page, pick my color palette, and just, and just go. But I need to refine success each day. That is what I'm going to offer for you to do. It's easily to feel overwhelmed if you expect to create something magnificent every day. Instead, take control of what success looks like each day. Literally tell yourself out loud or in your head, today is a success if I get these things done and extra is just a bonus. One day could look like for you of just getting some base color down on your canvas or maybe just writing for 30 minutes or going through magazines and pulling out collage papers for future project ideas. Today, you will work in your sketchbook for at least a half an hour. Just doodle, maybe some automatic writing 
ask for pictures to come in instead of writing just draw the thought forms that come in when you're doing that maybe look up some art courses you could enroll in online there are many possibilities to get you started then you can tell yourself with each success with each day today was amazing today I got something accomplished how does defining success in your terms decrease perfectionism so what I'd like you to do is start separating yourself from the idea that only a finished project is a success it's all about the little things the baby steps the small things one day like I said lay down the color of the background of your canvas next day make a stamp out of a potato and start stamping on it walk away next day do some fancy writing walk away if you don't like it leave it come back to it in a year if you don't like it leave it come back to it tomorrow you can always elaborate on it paint over it change it after all any big success at an art show a book published is made up of thousands of small steps taken each day recognize these daily steps where the successes that they are and you will find it easier to make some of the progress now we need to create a habit if you incorporate creating into your daily routine it loses some of its gravity over time when becoming a habit you cultivate an attitude that making it art is something you do regardless of the outcome making your art practice into a habit is no different than forming other habits it involves setting up a system makes a desired behavior as easy to do as possible now turning your art into a habit create cues to remind you like leaving your little pens or sketchbooks out on the table or at the end of a work pick period stick a post-it note on the fridge and question yourself about your project is there a better citation for this chapter or more blue or more orange work on this remove any obstacles to help you get you started for example you have to pack and unpack your materials every time you work that's a barrier to get started see if you can create a, a space a sacred space for your art even if it's small to keep your materials handy another possible obstacle is lack of time so scheduling your daily routine as if it was an appointment making creativity as a habit removes or at least decreases the expectations of perfection instead it's just something that you spend time doing like reading a book when I had a little person in my life when my daughter was very little I couldn't keep out my paints out on the table or she would help me paint so I had to put away my art every single night bring it out every night after she's in bed and put it away every night but I kept a container out on my table so it was easier to access and having to go through hidden cupboards to keep all my supplies away from my little one but it made sometimes it harder for me to just get out and paint just to get out and remember to do some painting and I really had to make sure I had that in my life I, even after a long day I was tired or exhausted of being a single mom and going to work all day I felt good to even just to draw for an hour I loved I'd set my schedule between 10 30 11 30 at night and I draw before I go to bed and I would put all my left brain worries switch it over to the right brain and boy did it feel good and that's about cultivating rituals have a ritual when you start creating it's got to be nourishing to you it's got to feel good and maybe filling with buckets of clean water sweeping the floors sorting out pens getting that cup of coffee or tea but 
including some art magic into your mundane life, I think is so important for the soul. It is so important for that right brain activity. There's no right or wrong here. There's no right or wrong answer. You get to use your imagination. You get to think about what you already do, what you like, what you want to incorporate. It's like organizing the supplies by starting a new project. You're getting everything out. You're having a blast. You're setting everything up. You're getting inspired. You're getting your palette out. Sometimes just picking the palette of colors and not knowing where to start, but just pick two to three colors and have some fun. But how do rituals help out with perfectionism? There are a couple of things at play here. First, your rituals got to get your body moving in case you are paralyzed by fear that accompanies perfectionism. Second, the comfort of your familiar routine helps you train your brain to shift it to more relaxed and creative headspace. You can focus on enjoying your creative process instead of doing something perfect. And speaking of process, I want you to focus on the process over the product. I think that is most important too. Again, with that saying I first quoted at the beginning of the video, it's about emotional accuracy. It's not about a photographic likeness. If you are paralyzed with the feeling of perfectionism, fear, engage some easy process exercises of the idea to get moving without a regard for the finished product. And here are some ideas for focusing on a progress over product. Here's going to get some, first one is going to freak you out, my friends, but the first one, I want you to design it so you could throw it away. Tell yourself that the finished product can go right into the trash when you're finished and may not, may or may not decide to throw something away in the end. And it's up to you. But by giving yourself the permission to onset to destroy something that relieves you any self-imposed pressure to create anything perfect. An example, you can create a sigil, burn it, release it up into the universe, throw it away, crumple it up as hard as you can throw it in the trash. Do something repetitive. See how many different lines you can make with a certain tool. Spend 10 minutes of writing about something that has nothing to do with your current project. Write about dirt. Write about an avocado, write about a shoelace, write about a circle, paint it. Break some rules now. There's no right or wrong to engage in the process of art. Instead, it's all about experience in making it. It is not about the finished product. It doesn't have to resemble anything you've ever done before and seen. In fact, it doesn't have to be recognizable at all. No, abstract art, my friends. The process art is bound boundaryless it's just it's the only requirement for you in an art process is for you to enjoy your creative thought process why does the process work to help out with perfectionism the process work relieves pressure related to the outcome and it frees you up to take tasks and create without an eye towards how things will look in the end. It doesn't matter. The outcome of the process of the art may surprise you sometimes. Recently, I've been working on my Grimoire With Me series. I started painting again, but I've been painting abstract backgrounds. Never done that before. I played around with watercolor and the salt technique to create the, the little snowflakes, but I've never really painted an abstract background to work with scrapbooking, journaling, grimoiring. So this has been a very freeing process for me, for I was the type of artist, still am, not perfectionism, I'm just a realist. I am a realist artist. And I like to have every tiny detail as I possibly can get in there. I will spend hours on an eye the size of a quarter 
And I will take that eye and I will give you such soul depth detail that you're looking into the soul of the creature. And now I'm just being free and I'm finger painting and I'm being like painting with water and rubbing alcohol and whatever happens, happens. And it's so exciting because I love the individual process that I can't control. I like the outcome so much that without thinking on how things would look, my brush strokes, my marks were much freer and I find they're much more spontaneous. Now another process you could do this, this one's a doozy my friends, but we're gonna write down your fears. Write down what you're afraid of and brainstorm how to deal with your fears. These fears are typically rooted in limiting beliefs that can be changed. Some common fears are some of the following is that I don't have anything original to paint. I don't have anything original to draw. You don't need to reinvent the wheel with your art, my love. You just need to express your authentic self and do your thing. It is what is original about you will leak out all over your art. Many artists are better than I am. I hear that a lot too. The odds are slim that you are the absolute best at what you do. If such an objection measure even exists, so what? Does this mean you're not going to ever create art because there's always going to be someone better than you? I call you out on that, my friend, because there's always going to be someone better than you. No two artists can ever be compared to each other because through age, experience, time, I was doing portraits in grade two by seven years old. Some people can't do portraits until they're 50 years old. Some people are painting at a, a older age, finding out it's the first time that they've discovered that they're an artist. My mother decided painting after she retired from teaching, discovered an inner artist and mind blowing her talent. And I tease her. I'm like, mom, what if you started when you were younger? Imagine where you'd be art be now, but really it just, it's her path and her journey and it's her time and it's what is needed now. Another one I hear about is if I can't do it right, I shouldn't even try. This is a classic example of all or nothing thinking. In fact, it's the host of cognitive disorders in this statement. It's the defeatist tone underlining this fear sounds like it's overwhelming. You can turn this thought around to something that sounds more like there is no right or wrong. I'm just here to have fun. There's joy in you waiting to emerge, my friend. And why should we address our fears to help out with perfectionism? While well, working on your fears or self-limiting beliefs is a form of self-therapy. You can paint these thoughts. You can write down these thoughts and feelings that are holding you back. Working on modifying them to feel less fearful. So be brave. Look directly at those parts that engage you in all or nothing thinking. Shower some love and parts of you that hide in fear that pressures you to feel like everything is too much or overwhelming. Slowly get acquainted with those parts of you that catastrophize this situation. Be nice to them. Remind them that no punishment awaits you if you express yourself. I'm going to repeat that. No punishment awaits you when you express yourself. I like you to put down 
a pink heart emoji if you caught this and you're going to claim it in the comments below claim it my friend so what i'd like you to try is something a little different we're going to paint draw collage multimedia your piece i'd like you to get just start off with an eight and a half by 11 paper just a little a4 paper and we're going to collage what's holding you back is it the little girl in you that someone told you that you weren't good enough did someone take that paintbrush out of your hand as a little boy in grade one and say that's not the right color to use for that Come on, man. Let's find out where these things started. I'd like you to do a bit of a mapping on this collage. So see what we can go on in your self-made prism. And see if we can detect some of the traumas that are hurting you. Because perfectionism can set you up for depression. It can disrupt your sleep. It can cause all types of upheaval. Perfectionism can help fuel your feeling of you're never good enough. It can foster inner compassion that can reduce shame. Once you start drawing, once you approach the workings with a painful feeling of beneath the perfectionism, help defuse your inner critic by driving your perfectionism out the door through art it's funny if you're afraid to do art yet art can help you with this fear sometimes there is work with perfectionism that is linked to traumas and traumas can sometimes strengthen the one core element that brings perfectionism its power yike why trauma-driven perfectionism can also be misassessed as a personality trait. So sometimes we have links to our past that can cause our perfectionism and art disorder. We are not good enough. You're not good enough. Who told you that? Did you tell yourself that? Did your parents tell yourself that? I've heard it so many times before i even had a teacher in grade two that told me that i couldn't draw portraits that i plagiarized lucky i was a stubborn hurt aries i was quite hurt i cried a little but i went home and i told my mommy and my mom contacted the teacher and said i watched her draw that on my kitchen table so luckily my mother stood up for me and said something but the teacher would not accept my drawing as part of my assignment she just assumed kids cannot be gifted kids cannot draw as good as her because she was teaching the class but I have run across some children when some teachers have told them you can't do that you're not good enough they'll just go okay and they'll just accept it whether that's saying just because an adult told them to or that's lazy I don't know or they're not stubborn I don't know but I've seen that with my friends little boy someone had told him he couldn't do that and he was mechanically inclined and he just accepted it and said okay and stop doing it it was the weirdest thing to me but it can happen to all of us let's look at some messy art ideas now we're ready to create i want to give you some fun messy art ideas anyone can do of course you rock your own ideas but let's get started if you don't know quite to have some fun and get messy art here is some wicked ideas first and foremost my friend finger painting it can be super fun and freeing 
make designs with your fingerprints or drag the paint across the page, get involved, get gooey, have some fun. Splatter painting. You can get loads of paint in your hands and do splatter painting and brush painting. You can load up your paint brushes and splatter the paint across, let it dry, and then do some intuitive drawing on top of that and release some of the characters and designs that you see out in the splatter painting. Free line drawing. Another great idea is grabbing your favorite marker, simply drawing a line on the page. Loops, circles, lines, whatever you want, without a care. Now you can leave it and now you can find shapes. And then you can color in the patterns. Color in the back and forth throughout the patterns and you can create some really cool mosaics. Blow paint. This one is one of my favorites and it's one we've done since elementary school, but ink or paint and a straw. I've made some really cool, gnarly graveyard trees out of that. Just dip your end in the straw of the paint and blow on the other end and create some really cool effects. Have fun manipulating the paint and ink on the page and then line it afterwards, ink it afterwards. It is so much fun. Free doodling is another one. Start a fresh page and do anything that comes to mind. Maybe think of some fun challenges and doodle 50 abstract faces and fill in the page into one shape. It's kind of like finding clouds. Do some clouds and find some shapes in there. Stamping, sponge, potato, fruit. Make up, make your own stamp blocks. Stamping is so much fun. You don't have to use any acrylic stamps. You can cut them out of anything from a sponge to potatoes. Create some fun patterns. Paint some background pages with watercolor. Let it dry and stamp it. Boom, presto, you got some grimoire pages. Spray bottle art. Simply fill up some ink or dye in a spray bottle with water and get spraying. Making some cool pages and artwork. You can put down doilies, designs, spray over top of that. You can use stencils. Then you could use it for background in your journal books and your grimoire books for drawing on it. Another one is string art. It's a great way to in, just play around with some illustrations. I've used chains. I've used strings. You can just dip the string in some paint. Now place it on some paper. Do some loops, some fun patterns. And pull. Oh man, I love doing that one. It's just an absolute fun one. I especially like doing that one with the chains. Bubble art. How about making some bubble art too? You can use ink or dye in a bubble mixture. Blow the bubbles onto the page. And then when they hit the page, they pop. They create fun, colorful bubbles and patterns. Let your artwork and create some fun drawings with the patterns created. Again, more background pages for your journals or grimoire books. Well... I think these are all kinds of cool ideas that you could use for creating some habits in your mundane work, add some magical artwork in your mundane life, and don't be worried. Being a perfectionism when it comes to art and procrastinating, not doing your art means you're a little scared about not being able to do it just right. And that's not necessary for art is freeing, art is emotional. Have fun with your art and do something unique, do something abstract, do something messy. And that way there's no right or wrong and it gives you a starting point to get going on your magical art journey. Well, thanks so much for hanging out with me today and have yourself an absolutely magical day.